I think every flat earth researcher has seen the dog cam high altitude balloon videos. They're used a lot to prove the flat horizon. They're also used to prove a globe earth mainly because of ignorance surrounding wide angle lenses and their effect on flat horizons. To find out if that footage represents a flat earth or a globe earth model, I animated each using identical camera movements. First let's watch a little of the original. Things to look for. The presence or lack of hotspot on the surface of earth. What happens to the horizon as it moves above and below the camera's center axis. And is there any motion parallax between the horizon and the sun as proposed by Rob Skiba? This hotspot on the surface of the clouds looks like a, a local phenomena, yet that would be impossible on the globe earth or the flat earth model at this latitude. This uh, video was taken above the Tropic of Cancer. The only explanation I can see is that the Atmos plane itself is acting as a type of projector for a sun that is much higher, three or four thousand miles up. And we are just seeing the image of the sun as it appears in the Atmos plane. 100 or 200 mile thick substance of water and gas vapor. Okay, that's enough for now. I will post the original link in the summary. Now let's analyze both models against the original. Yeah, if you've seen the standard model right now, yeah. it shows the sun yeah, the spiral. shooting, yeah, shooting, shooting through, through the universe. Yeah. And spiraling. And the, yeah, and everything else spiraling around it as it's going out there. Uh, speaking of the sun, um, there's all kinds of weird things about yeah. the sun when you start actually paying attention to yeah. it. And there is, speaking of high altitude balloon yeah. tests, <laughs> one of the most famous ones on YouTube that everybody's probably seen by now is the dog camera. It's the dog cam. It shows the wing of a support structure that uh -huh. has a camera and, and there's a little banner on it that says dog cam. <laughs> and it's it, it's probably using some sort of wide angle fisheye lens, but the, the horizon is pretty close to right across the center. Yeah. So you're not really getting the distortion. Yeah. And it's wobbling around a bit. But in the several shots, it shows the sun. Mm -hmm. And right below the sun on the earth is a hot spot. Like right yeah. below the sun. Yeah. Well, the sun's 93 million miles away, and it's so much bigger than Earth, putting one big parallel lines of yeah. light toward us. How are you going to get a, a hot spot mm -hmm. directly below it? And the other problem with that is, is it's shaking and it's moving, the, the camera, the, 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 yeah. the picture is. So you're getting a little you shutter. You, there is zero motion parallax. Now, if you've ever noticed, if you've ever dri driven down a, a road like out in, the, yeah. in, like in Lubbock, Texas, there's mm -hmm. this area where there's li lots of windmills. Yeah. And nothing else, as flat as can be. <laughs> windmills as far as you can see. And if you're driving, you know, 80 miles an hour or whatever on the highway, you notice that the windmills are beside you, or the closest to you, they're whipping by. Yeah, really fast. <laughs> but the ones further in the distance, the further out you go, they're hardly moving. I think the question Rob had was if there should be motion parallax between the horizon and the sun. The distance to the horizon at 110,000 feet is 406 meters. The distance to the sun in their model is 93 million. I think the reason they had to put the sun that far away was to avoid any issue of motion parallax. Now, if the sun is 93 million miles away, 
then when you see the movement of the, the, the weather balloon is doing, the horizons coming in and out of frame and doing yeah. different things like that, there should be a notable difference between the speed at which the horizon is moving and the speed at which the sun, 93 million miles away, if there's motion parallel. It should be, there should be a difference. Yeah. The problem is, they're, they're in perfect sync. Perfect the horizon sync. and the horizon and the sun are perfect sync in its movement, showing that it has to be a localized object. It, as localized as the hot spot and the horizon that's in the distance. And that was one of the first things that caught my attention when I saw I'm like, there's no motion parallax there. There should be considerable motion parallax with the earth that close below you and an object 93 million miles away. There should be considerable motion parallax. Now let's see how a swinging camera would appear on the Flat Earth model. Same camera specifications and altitude as original. It doesn't look like there is any noticeable motion parallax between the flat earth horizon and the local sun. Now let's see what the same exact camera movements look like on the globe earth model. The sun does appear to move higher in relation to the horizon as it moves up to the top of the frame, but I think that is just due to the curvature of the lens where distortion will be the greatest. Now let's see all three together. In the next week or so I'll do another one of these uh, comparing it to Rob Skiba's recent launch and I will try to match the camera movements to the original as much as possible. In this case they are similar between the globe and flat, but the original is difficult to match as it has many cuts and edits.